Academy for Social Change presents Prisoner's Dilemma. Maggie and Lou are found at a crime scene. Given the physical evidence, they're each looking at what about one year in prison. However, the cops want more than that. They take Maggie and Lou to separate holding cells and present them each with a dilemma, to either testify against the other or remain silent. If one of them chooses to testify and the other remains silent, then the testifier will be given full immunity while their cohort will be sentenced to six years in prison. If both parties blab, they'll each be charged with a prison time of three years. Of course, they could both keep quiet and get off with only one year each. Both suspects are told that their alleged partner is presented with the same deal. A little while later, the police have testimonies from both Maggie and Lou. Why? This scenario is known as the prisoner's dilemma, as it's a classic example of game theory. By modeling potential interactions between people, we can understand why rational beings sometimes make choices that seem counterintuitive. Game theory is the model framework for understanding strategic decision-making among individuals or players. Prisoner's Dilemma is an example of non-cooperative game theory that demonstrates why two rational individuals would refuse to work together even if it might be in their best interest to do so. Game theory provides tools to study a vast amount of human interactions or games. An individual's choices in these games affects another's gains or losses. Two big categories of game theory are cooperative and non-cooperative. In cooperative game theory, it's in the player's best interest to form teams, and the bonds between teammates can be trusted. Together, they work towards a shared goal. Non-cooperative games are the exact opposite. They're competitive. Everyone is working to their own benefit. To fully understand the difference, let's examine the competitive prisoner's dilemma. Take Lou's perspective. Maggie isn't your sister or girlfriend or even friend. You have no reason to believe she isn't going to take that attractive immunity deal. If she talks, it's in your best interest to talk too. If she stays silent, talking is still your best option, you'll get off with no jail time. Since you can't control Maggie's behavior, testifying against her is the smartest choice you can make. The same logic applies to Maggie's perspective. Therefore, both parties will end up testifying against the other. This is because their situation isn't conducive for cooperative play. Maggie and Lou stand to gain from betraying the other. Game theories are used daily in so many fields. Companies use them to determine sale prices. Philosophers use game theory to create and debate moral dilemmas. They've even been employed in the political sphere. Game theories are applied to the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, for example. The event has often been compared to a high-stakes game of chicken, but it can also be modeled with a simple chart, not unlike those used to explain the prisoner's dilemma. Each player then had two possible choices to make. For the US, it was to make a surgical airstrike, wiping out the installed missiles by force, or to de-escalate the conflict by lifting its naval blockade. The Soviet Union, meanwhile, could either maintain their missiles or withdraw their missiles from Cuba in a bid for peace. Combined, these moves could lead to one of four main outcomes, US victory, Soviet victory, compromise, or mutually assured destruction in the form of a nuclear war. Neither party wants to lose the game, they want to win. Following the logic of the prisoner's dilemma, that meant that even though it's objectively the worst option, both parties came dangerously close to starting a nuclear war no one would survive. So why didn't they? Simple, they changed the rules of the game. A prisoner's dilemma mainly works because the two parties can't communicate. If they're allowed to talk, the game stops being competitive, so the chances of backstabbing decreases dramatically. Rational individuals are willing to compromise if it ensures that they won't lose. With a lost situation as big as mutually assured destruction, US and Soviet leaders were willing to compromise once they actually talked to each other. Whether it's in political science, biology, computer science, or economics, game theories are used to model human behavior and help determine what's the smartest or the fairest way to approach a problem. Now it's your time to think further. What are some real life examples of cooperative games?